What's up, everybody? This is Jason back with Campbell's Morel Music. Special edition, episode 4-0. As I said, the same age as our guest today. He's... Mm. And uh, mm. if he's not 40, he looks really good for his age, and he, he looked 40. Thank you. And uh, another bass player... And, you know, this is this one's going, we, we might be here for hours tonight. It could be. This could be the longest episode ever, actually. <laughs> and I'm, as I said, we're having every bass player within a two-hour radius. Because so they are the, well, the backbone, the most important. That's exactly. So. Vapor just shaking his head. I can see that from here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you probably recognize this guy. If you've been in the Tri-Cities and you've shopped around for boutique instruments, weird instruments, Japanese instruments, You've probably seen this guy. Yep. And the older folks, you've probably seen him selling records and yep. and whatever else at the old antique shops or yeah, store stores. Record bar even yeah. back in the day. Ooh. Record bar. That's yeah, a long man. time ago. Yeah. Like I said, that belies the forty. Yeah. So okay. now we can't say forty no more. Well, yeah. Well, it's not. But like that. Uh, you call him what you want. I call him Mo Mark Holmes <laughs> <laughs> of the infamous Skin Flag. I mean, yes, Skin Flag, one of the many bands that I purport to be in that are off the books. And uh, Captain Tunnel? Captain Tunnel featuring Special Lad, which features my brother, Benny, playing drums, and Hans Rokeberry, the Shazam, singing, playing guitar. We played at Capone's tour a couple times and um, do obscure covers and, man, mostly Blurster Cult stuff, to be honest, but <clears throat> something to do. Yeah, Blurster Cult. Yep. So, that, I mean... Uh, so yeah, uh, I first met you uh, probably back in the strings days at Bristol. You were you were uh, killing insects and rats, rodentia, and if uh, I remember correctly, I was killing bugs. You were, <clears throat> and yeah. uh, which which you know kind of as later on as we discover, you know, I started building pedals, and Mo comes up with bug killer effects. And starts naming my pedals and by drawing way, on them. I did. And by the way, I still haven't gotten a check for that, but we'll I, talk later. Well, I never made any money. Oh. Oh, well. And also, Mo is the co-founder, or no, maybe the founder uh -huh. of Clarveston Industries. I am the I am the founder, CEO, uh, CFO, and just pretty much FO of Clarveston <laughs> Industries. So, and, anything, so see, anything, anything that you see that says the word Clarveston, here's the motto that you must remember. That's correct. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, Mo, Mo's the one that introduced me to obscure basses, obscure pedals, and uh, has a wealth of knowledge of bands in general, what they use, and oh, bless you. yeah. So, uh, like, all my influence right here is, oh, man. is right here in front that's of me. A, well, so it's an honor. Well, oh, stop it! <laughs> oh my God, the check will be in the mail. For this. <laughs> so oh, we're cool. just making we're just making vapor. It is. We're just yeah. Basically, we're just making him have to sit there and do this. Do but this, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I originally was going to bring a small amp down here and show you that hey, you don't need to schlep a whole bunch of junk. However, <laughs> upon getting here, realizing that I should have schlepped my rig for the 12 string bass, which by the way, it takes its own little thing to be honest. I run a, a PV Renown from the 80s, 120 watts with a 215, 69 fender drip edge 215 cabinet, just to get this thing, because it's it needs a guitar amp for the top, you know? And the reason this thing even exists is I'm a huge, I'm the probably, if I'm not the biggest cheap trick fan in the world, I'm real close. Real close. And I got the see them early and tom peterson played a 12 string bass and i was like well all right then you need a 12 i need one of those eventually but mm -hmm. uh funny story he had the uh, guys from hamer call me um long ago when i'd met him and they said oh yeah we can hook you up with one and, and a good price i'm like oh cool and their good price was three grand and i was like oh no <laughs> so this one's uh this one's made in korea uh it's a galveston which i love the korean take on Texas names. I think it's pretty funny. But it sounds pretty good. It's got a uh, what a Bartolini preamp, but the pickups are just stock. But it just makes a great racket. And if you... I mean, it's just... You know? Isn't that just... I just love that. 
And then the, you know, the end of uh, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, you know. There's nothing better than that. Just making a racket. So I brought yeah. a bunch of racket making stuff too. Especially when you're in a three piece. Oh yeah, yeah. Just to feel that, feel that. Well, yeah, because you know originally, like if we're gonna go down memory lane some more too, because I probably will, because I'm over forty. Uh, I was told uh, my brothers played drums since he was three, and our this friend of mine was a really good guitar player, and they came in and said, "Hey man, um, we got a show, and you're playing bass." And I'm like, mm, "What?" And they said, "Yeah, you're playing bass." I said, "Never held one. Don't know anything about it." He said, well, it's two less strings. And I said, well, okay. And I said, but why do you need me to play? And he goes, because there's going to be girls there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> less strings. Equals more girls. Equals more girls. Bass pretty, players, yeah. It's pretty simple. Yeah, if, you mean, look, <laughs> if you do the math, <laughs> if you think about it. I, th I mean, like every major band that I follow – the bass players always got the prettiest girls. Always, and I, and I, I uh, well, you know, and as anybody knows that, you know, I, I married way out of my league. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so that's a fact. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say uh, the cost too. We we're we we're going to do the thing, Chris. I saw your guys on your, you man, your guys on these rig rundowns are amazing. First of all, all of them are really good players, and I'm not. I am not a good player compared to these. These guys are really good, and they bring in like. <laughs> ridiculously cool deer and it's and i'm like well i'm probably the great value guy because i'm like I, what kind of racket can i make for the least amount of money too you know like this thing i believe you sold this to me mm -hmm. what was that a couple hundred bucks at the most well yeah. a couple of just kill that so that's pretty cool <laughs> the great value talk. great value. i am i am the great value i'm the timu peterson <laughs> What's the shine? Oh yeah, I love the shine of Tom Peters. <laughs> well, here's the deal. So, I like cheap bases, and I always have, and I love Japanese stuff. I just the, their stuff is just made better, I think. So one day we were perusing, was it Facebook Marketplace? I believe, yeah. And Boone, North Carolina, this guy has this base, and it says. I'm in Boone, I need money, I go to college, 80 bucks. So as fast as we could drive to Boone, I saw it. And it's a Bentley, which if you know your Japanese guitars, late 70s, and then they switched to Korea in the late, like 79, 80s. Anyway, it's the absolute best P bass I've ever owned. I spent 80 bucks on it. The tuners are mismatched. So but anyway, yeah, less clay it's the less clay pulling MGs, and it's just it's just punchy. I mean, it's a it's probably and it's seriously, and I've had as far as P bases go. Ugh, my career of evil started in '79, so I had a '78, and I've had one of every year. I've had vintage ones. I've had, this is the best one I've ever, had. and it weighs as I'll let you peruse it. It weighs nothing, oh, and yeah. it's lovely. Yeah, perfect weight. And so, uh, if y'all are ever in Spicewood, Texas, you've got to go to Pooties, because there's no bad days in Pooties. <laughs> Just remember that. On a name like that, there can't be no any bad days. There can't be. Yeah. I walked in. We were coming back from our honeymoon in uh, what's the what's the name of that place? Base Drop, Texas, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house and gas station. We're driving through there, Spicewood, Texas, and we go in, and it was exactly like every Texas Roadhouse bar you would imagine you've ever seen in a movie, every one of them. And this guy behind the counter looked like Willie Nelson's older brother. <laughs> well, he looks at me in, in complete disdain. And I bought a T-shirt and a sticker, and he's like, is that be all? And he goes, yeah. I said, who's, who's uh, equipment up there? Whose bass is that? He goes, are you a bass player? And I said, yeah, I am. He goes, man, do you want a gig? <laughs> Seriously. And I said, well, we're just traveling. He goes, well, listen, now we only got three rules. One, have fun. Two, don't hit on the women. And three, smoke all the dope you can find. <laughs> and that was pretty much the best. Yeah. So that's pooties. Anyway. That's awesome. It was pooties. Yeah. So, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> we got off track that, a little bit. Hard to follow. Pooties. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 
Mo being the the uh, all knowing, all seeing <laughs> eye of all pedals. Wow, man, that's and, that's uh, pressure. I mean, you introduced me I, to pedals. I did. Yes, I and, did. Uh, yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah. So, um, with your pedal board, mm -hmm. this is more important than your rig. Probably it is. Actually, it is. My rig consists of a dark glass. Is it the 500 that I bought from here, as a matter of fact? And it is the absolute base head I've ever had, the best one I've ever used. I didn't bring it because I thought, well, you know, you got, we got one here, so here. why bother? And plus, um, we're trying to sell this right Plus, we're trying it. to sell, yeah. This is the second. Th these things are awesome <laughs> because, first of all, they're portable. Second of all, they're loud. Third of all, you can run them direct. Fourth of all, if they catch on fire, eh, no great shape. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the, 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 my whole point is, is, is kind of this, man. These can be, these just make a low end racket and it's okay. And amps just, you know, throw them out there. But I like pedals because pedals color stuff and you can spend a little bit of money or a lot of money and color a whole bunch of stuff with these things. And this pedal board is set up for both of these if I wanted to. I've got, uh, I guess right now, probably 30 fuzz boxes sitting around. But I picked these out because they sound really good with both of these. And, uh, you know, uh, I've got on this board right now, uh, signal goes straight into an old boss tuner because everybody's got one. Mm -hmm. um, in a compressor, it's an MXR custom comp that I was on all the time, constantly, because with bass especially, your strings are uneven, man. You got a big, giant, fat string, a little tiny string. You need a compressor to even everything out. Mm -hmm. And if your amp doesn't have one built in, like the awesome Rumble has a built in compressor. I don't know. I don't either. Anyway, so <laughs> that, I have a uh, 64 frame of star bass that has a little single coil pickup, and it's really low output. So that EP boost, I'll give an EP boost to give there it. to give it in case, yeah, I play it. It's got flat wheels, right? And then a modded bass overdrive that a friend of mine modded once upon a time. And then uh, into that, there's a, there's a company called humanoid pedals from north carolina and that is their fuzz pedal called the ghoul and it's the prototype he sold me the the actually the first one he built with tape on it and everything so that's cool um from there i also have another fuzz box it's made in japan called it's uh, animals pedal cup yeah. it's the fishing is as fun as fuzz pedal mm -hmm. and from that is a the little cheap um, I've been at sound tanks. I collect those. Yeah. So if anybody out there has sound tank pedals that they don't like because, well, they do cause cancer in laboratory animals, mm -hmm. you contact Clarveston Industries and we will buy them from you. <laughs> okay? Or trade you a skin flag t-shirt. <laughs> one of the two. Um, I, that's the super chorus. It's really good with bass because um, it doesn't have that real high endy. Right. Uh, it, it's actually it's really lo-fi, so it sounds great. And then the next pedal is an interesting one. It's the only one that I believe you've ever made. I think so. It is a bug killer delay pedal, the very first one that my friend Jason made. And it's been on every board I've ever had. And you go, well, wait a minute. Why would you have delay on a bass? Well, Why not? There's the, there's the uh, answer. Uh, Why not? Every bass player needs delay. Uh, or exactly. Or, did or you say, reverb. Did you say delay or olay? Olay or delay. Oh, either way. Either way. Either okay. Way. I Some like kind of like way. I like both ways. Okay. And uh, the chain also, you run your modulation stuff, but what I did is you run the decimator, uh, ISP decimator to cut all that noise out after the... Uh, the stuff. Yes. And then it goes into the chorus and delay. But I also on this board have a synth 9, because if you ever want to do rush, you can play that rush lick off of subdivisions. It nails it. And then... This is real quick. I will absolutely. I don't even know the lick, but I do know that. I know the first note. Hey, look at that cat. Look at that following me. Let's see here. All right, here we go. That's an overhunt. It sounds just like one. And and once again, why would you have one on the bass? Because why not? There you go. Now, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now the last pedal on this board is a, is probably the is the most expensive pedal I have, 
And just for this, it's never been on a board. I put two tiny little pieces of Velcro on it because I didn't want to ruin it. And it is a late 80s, early 90s DOD gonculator. And a gonculator is, well, it's a noisemaker. It's a ring mod and an envelope follower and a distortion all kind of messed up together. Uh, it... That's a, that's a pedal you can't describe, you have to play it. It's a gonculator, it just gonks, and it emulates, too. You know? And, it, and if you like, if, if you're like, if there's a kid running somewhere that you want to scare, you just, and it just, they just yeah. jolt. <laughs> I use it a lot for Halloween. It's Reminds me of like that, what was that, uh, Geiger? Oh, counter? Geiger counter. Oh, yeah. was Weapons of Mass Destruction, Geiger counter. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's they copy, well, they copied that. Yeah. That was, yeah, 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 they copied that, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's kind of this little board here. Um, and once again, cheap base, cheap bases, kind of medium ex expensive pedals and, and have fun because you can collect pedals a lot and, you know, oh, get, yeah. they, and you can hide them better. Mm -hmm. If you have to go home with a pedal, you can just, you know, you can't go home with an amp. <laughs> you go, I got another amp, honey. You know, we're not eating this week. Or, or you know, hey, what's that, what's that base sticking out of your pants? No. Uh, nope. Yeah, uh -uh. can't do it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I don't know where I don't know where you shop, but I need to go there. Um, uh, anyway, so that's pretty much. You know, I do have a rig. I said I have a rig for this thing that consists of a, a guitar amp and a, ca a big two fifteen cab. But uh, I'm too old to schlep it if I ever played it out. Um, and but I like carrying pedals and small amps. And matter of way, if you play at Capone's, which you know is the only place around here I would be full with playing. You don't even have to do anything but just bring your board. You just run direct through the PA yeah. and just not even. All and it, yeah, just feel everything underneath and then you're finished. Everybody else is having to tear stuff down and you're already eating pizza, <laughs> which is good. Yeah. So, you know, there's that. <clears throat> oh, well, okay, well, we might as well. I'm going to just go ahead and jinx your football team now. Oh, gosh. Your Dolphins are playing pretty well. Pretty well, but. I'm just go ahead yeah. and do it, right? I'm just going right now. You can. Uh, what time is it? You can mark it no, down. They're, they're playing in Germany, Kansas City. Uh, like, you can mark uh, it down. They'll get. They're going to get just absolutely. And Kansas City got whooped, and so they're going to be mad. Yep. yep. So anyway. Well, I'm a Steelers fan, so there's no hope for us this year. <laughs> but anyway. No, I, um, yes. <clears throat> my goal again, bringing every bass player, you know, <laughs> and uh, even you know, we might get Tom Petini on here. Do you think so? Look, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a, okay. Okay, yeah, seriously, and I'll, okay. So, like, there, I, I know, I've known Tom for years and years, and he is a great bass player. He great. really is a great bass player. And I, like I said, you know, was with Jackal and, and all that stuff. And he's, he, you know, and I don't even play around him. I mean, you know, anybody pick a bass up upside down, upside down, backwards, and play it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, and uh, I've got his number, so I can make. A, <laughs> I, I will make a call uh, to get him on here. Well, um, I mean, if my goal is to get every bass player there, you have to, you don't have to you? get Tom. Well, you have to get Tom. Um, there's a lot of, but there's a lot, so many good ones. The kid, I watched the, was it Wind Rider? Garth. Uh, Garth. Was, yeah. Oh, gosh, those guys are, those guys are ridiculous. That, they're man. great, man. I just saw where they got added to the Maryland Doom Fest next year. Yeah. They're, and they're oh, and playing with one of my favorite bands, Whores. Yeah. I mean, God, they're, 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 they're good. There's such a really cool Doom stonery thing around this area. It's really cool. The, I mean, three of my favorite three of my favorite bands are like the Dime Store Cowboys, Wilson and the Walk, mm. <laughs> and Appalachian and Death Cult. That's probably my three favorite bands <clears throat> in uh, 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 well, in, of all time, actually. Oh gosh, um, all they're probably. <laughs> This, um, this, somebody this program just freaking would die. It took a nose dive. Did it? Did yeah. It really? Uh, maybe not. I no, don't I don't think so. I think it's pretty strong. <laughs> but anyway, that, Mo's opinion matters. It does. <clears throat> And like Pequeno, uh, <laughs> Pequeno. That he, was for you. Like I said from the very beginning, you're a wealth of information of well, music and it's really. Critic. It's I'll tell you what. Man, what's really fun is is <laughs> learning as you get older that uh, you don't have to either a spend a lot of money to to have fun, and it's all supposed to be is fun. Just have a good time with this, man. Anybody says you should can't play or you shouldn't do this, yeah, don't listen to them. Just go do it anyway. Yeah, and and. 
uh, just as a shout out to anybody else out there, um, don't don't let anybody intimidate you into going to a music store or going in and asking somebody about something. Uh, everybody had to start. Nobody knows everything, and I certainly don't. And I sit and read all the time. But you know, go and talk to people. Yeah. And man, get in a band as quick as you can. Just find you some people that want to make a racket and go do it. Because I mean, what, what you know, what else are you gonna do? Yeah. You know, what else are you gonna do? You're gonna sit, you know, I mean, how many times can you look at that same TikTok video with that girl with her, well, never mind. But you just, <laughs> just go play. Yeah, okay. again, that's like, you know, my goal, bring every bass player in the area around. This is this is one of my heroes. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, I'm serious. I mean, you, you introduced me to this stuff. When I first come to Strings in Bristol, I was first getting started. Yeah, man. And you pushed me yeah. to build pedals. Yep. You pushed me to play loud. Yep, and uh, you should. I mean, I loved coming up there and plugging in the SVT to the eighteen. Well, that was fun. Cannon and that was fun. Wasn't rattling it? the pedals off the shelf, but uh, yeah, we always had a good time. We do, and, and uh, still do. Anything, still do. anything weird, Japanese stuff. You know, you know, I wouldn't know nothing without without Mo, and uh, it's good. To, it's good to be around people like that and and well, learn from. Well, that's really sweet. And like I said earlier, Jason doesn't take credit cards, but I have to write him a personal check for that endorsement. <laughs> yeah. That was nice. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll get you later. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and by the way, you know, anybody, uh, you can look me up on Instagram. Um, if you questions or anything at all, man, just holler, uh, you know. Got something weird you want to ask I'm, about? I'm, yeah, I got nothing to do. So. Maybe base party fill in? Sure. I got nothing. Here, you'll travel. Sure. I ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> but, man. Mo, thanks for hanging out Buddy, with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you much. And, I appreciate uh, you. Thanks for hanging out with Campbell's Music. Always. That's a nice place I come to buy stuff, man. Yeah. That's it. I guess, you know, we'll play some like Blue Earth Court. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Dude, play something. Yeah. yeah That'd be the, good. Yeah. For the outro or something. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> cool. Maybe YouTube won't <laughs> copyright it. Oh, well, just play a, <laughs> yeah, play a knocked off version. Oh, yeah. Okay.